So now that we're in the unit, now you've already seen, again, part of the previous video where I was jumping around and I was showing you guys the tables and my excitement and stuff. And so now what we've done is right now we already have the table set up in its bed configuration. So it's already been lowered down. We placed the pad across the table. So now you can see how the bed configuration would look. So you could either have a couple people, large, taller adults, sleep this way, um, as the trailer is actually seven and a half foot wide, so you can actually get some. Now you do lose a few inches with the thickness of the pad, but you should be able to get, you know, maybe about a six foot tall um, adult sleeping across this way, or maybe a couple kids, um, or you can have them sleep this way as well, especially like the smaller kids, stuff like that. So here you can see the bed configuration or the table in its bed configuration. Now, why we're in this area too, um, while the table's down, because it makes it a little bit easier, I'm gonna show you the underneath compartments. The underneath compartments is where you're gonna find your battery and your your switch, your battery switches for your cutoff, um, your inverter, and as well as a whole lot of storage underneath the bench. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take a look at that real quick. Okay, so in the first compartment, so the one closest to the door, as we lift up this pad, and it's a short little pad, and the, the best part is we even got a shorter little pad in here, a cute little pad right there. And so we have our first compartment. And so within our first compartment, if you look, we have one, two, three, four big AGM batteries, 100 amp hours a piece, as well as our battery cutoff switch. So that way you can turn off all of your batteries completely. It's completely disconnect. Um, as well as our fuses. We have an inverter fuse, control panel, the towing vehicle, as well as a fuse for these solar controllers. So we have our solar controller, our batteries, and they're all bracketed down and they're all put in there very securely. So again, nice, big, four batteries give you lots of power to make sure you're powering all your lights and whatnot throughout the day. So here, continuing on with the bench, with the dinette area, now we're in the middle pad. Now in the middle pad, as we lift up the door, as you can see, we have our standard 2000 watt inverter that we like to use. So we have our batteries, we have our inverter, and then again, we have our battery charger or the, the battery charging controller in the other compartment as well. So all of our electrical system stuff is located right here in the first two compartments, easily and, uh, easily and readily available to get to. Now, this third bench, this third side, is really one of the most exciting sides because if you open it up, there's actually two doors to it. And if you look under there, there's a lot of storage underneath this bench. So whether you're using like sleeping bags or food or whatever it is you're gonna put it in there there's a lot of room underneath the benches for storage so like i said before in, in my previous video there is a lot of storage in this unit i mean you look around you got one two three four five six cabinets just in this area alone um, so I, again a lot of room for storage a lot of room for space a lot of room, well, I can't open this one at the same time, but a lot of room for stuff everywhere within this unit. So this, the HQ21 really has a lot of nice amenities when it comes to storage. Okay, so now that we are done kind of going through the different compartments in the dinette area, I've gone ahead and I've removed the two pads. I just picked them up, I just moved them here for now. Later on, probably what I'll do is I'll probably actually put them back up in the front bedroom area. But what I wanted to show you again was how the table works. So one of the nice things, like I said, it's a singular telescoping table and there's a trigger just underneath here. And so when you squeeze the trigger, it comes up, it elevates very easily. So then you have your dinette table. And so just in case you haven't seen it here, I'm gonna sit down here, you know, I can squeeze through here. So there's a lot of room, even in this area, but this table, you know, like if I sit to the side, even as a big guy, I can sit here. I can still have somebody sitting here. Someone can still sit here, sit here. So potentially you can sit about five to six people at this table and be able to move comfortably. You might be playing a little bit of, of, of knee knockers where you're knocking each other's knees, but if you need the table space, this is a great place because you're sitting, you're eating, you're gathering with your family, maybe you're playing a card game, playing a board game, having fun. You have this beautiful view with all of these big windows. What a great, great area. One of my favorite areas and one of my favorite campers. So as long as I'm here in the dinette area, I use this opportunity to talk about the screens. Now, again, we've seen these screens before. It's the ones we're always using in our units, but 
we like to incorporate a nice open window because if you have open windows, open windows have a better tendency for airflow through a unit. Well, the bugs don't always cooperate, so you can't always have wide open windows with better airflow. So we do still have our screens. So we have our bug screen and we have our privacy screen. So the two will actually latch together, latch together, and then they can slide up so you have your full view bug screen. Or hey, it's nighttime and I need to block out the, the, the possible morning sunlight. We have this, but you know, let's say it's still hot. We don't want to run the air conditioner because we're not plugged in uh, to a shoreline and the inverter and the battery power is not going to run the air conditioner unless you do a lot of upgrades to it. Personal upgrades, not from us. So you want the screen open. So I have my screen open, but you still got to block the morning sun. That's why we have the blinds. So I'm going to reach over my shoulder here. I'm going to close down the blinds so that way we can still get that nighttime or that dark covering when the sun comes up in the morning. Now, let's say you're down the, for, the, for the count, it's bedtime, but you still want to do some reading. So I'm going to scoot over here. And so the nice thing is I love how we have these touch. I love the touch lights. Now, the first touch is going to give you like a little ambient blue light, kind of like a night light. You give it a second touch, now you have your reading light. And to turn it back off, you just touch it again. So again, right as we come in the door to our right, we have our, our entertainment area at our center. And so we actually start off with actually all of our lighting switches. And so these switches right here control the lights between the puck lights, the LED lights, and all the lights within the cabin and the compartment. This is the main battery cutoff. So the large square one, you turn that, you turn everything off. And then you have these rocker switches here. So the rocker switches are actually for the floodlights outside from the sides to the front and to the back. And then we also have another GFCI, or ground fault current interrupter plug right here. Now, as again, we get into our, our kind of entertainment storage area. We have our DVD TV player. So as I pull it out here, if you look over here on the side, you can see there is a DVD player there. Okay, but there's also a high definition antenna that's hooked into this TV. And so that's what this controller here is. This is so uh, just like the, the uh, TV antenna you have at your home, possibly if you have one, if you don't you know, have satellite or something. And so there's actually a little lever here. Let's see if I can show you here. You actually squeeze this lever, which frees it up and allows you to turn the antenna so that way you get the clearest signal for the high definition TV antenna. So it's just like the old school rabbit ears if you are familiar with that. Now, another feature you may not be able to see unless you kind of come up around over here is, and there, this is what we're including on all of our newer units, and it's back in here, and it's this little white switch. So this little, little light switch is the thermostat, if you can kind of see that, it's the thermostat for if you opt to buy the, or order the winter package. Now, the winter package includes a heated pad that goes up against your water tanks to keep your water tanks from freezing. And so this is the thermostat control for it. So you hit the switch, you turn it on, and then you have all of your different settings to increase your heat, lower your heat, or whatever you're gonna do with it, okay? And then when you come down here, you have another little open cabinet door, so that way there's some storage you can put in here, maybe a DVD or whatever you wanna put down in here. And as you come down, you have more storage, more cabinetry. Some really actually the bottom ones are actually a fairly deep cabinet. Um, but the nice part is we have some nice cabinetry, some nice stuff that you can put um, things in here, belongings, DVDs, whatever it is you're going to bring with you, you can put it down in here. So now as we get into the kitchen area, we have our nice little kitchen. We have our cabinets. We'll start up here in the cabinets. We have some nice cabinet space. And actually in this one, this is going to be our control panel where we have all of our breaker switches as well as our water gauges for our gray tanks, our black tanks, our general, our drinking. Um, we have a, a, an LED readout for our voltage, how much is being used. We also have our switches for our water heater. It's a double switch. The one with the, uh, the indicator of the flame is so that way the hot water will work off of propane. And the one with the little lightning bolt, that's for if you're plugged into a shoreline so you can heat your water with electrical power. Um, so, and then you have your pump switches. One is for drinking water, one is for general water to turn on your pumps. Like I said earlier, there are two water pumps, one for general and one for drinking, okay? And then here in this one, this is gonna be a cabinet for putting, you know, dishes or plates or cups or whatever you're gonna do. And right now we have, you know, some paperwork and stuff like that up in here. 
and then we have our microwave. Now again, to use your microwave, you need to turn on your inverter. Now we utilize a satellite switch for our inverter. So your inverter, the main unit, will be turned to the off position and you'll use the satellite switch that's on the wall back there to turn on your microwave or to turn on your TV. Okay, so again, here in the kitchen, we have some other cool little things. So we have our vent and our lights that go up in here. I'm gonna turn the fan back off because we have our stove right here. So we have a nice cover. So this way you can use this stove area as a prep area, as a serving area, whatever you need it to be when you're not using it as your stove. So this just lifts up very gently. And the nice part is we actually have now a clip here. So when you come back, it hits up against that rather than hitting up against your, uh, your screen here. This is the top of the stove, or this is a cover for the stove. You lift this up. And so now we have our three burner stove. So whenever you're using or whenever you're cooking within the, the camper, you wanna make sure you turn on your vent so that way you have that heat being vented out of the area. Now, as we come down, we also have an oven. Now, only two of our units now have ovens, our HQ19 and now our HQ21. So it's kind of a nice feature if you are prepared to use it. Not everybody uses it. I personally don't typically use my oven, but I do have it there if I want it. Um, you know, you have like some little you know, lights and you know some other little cool things with it, but at least we do still have an oven within this unit. Now, below this, we also have some cabinetry as well as a gas line shut off. So we've added a lot of safety features when it comes to like gas lines and stuff like that. And so we have a shut off. Now, what good would cooking be if you didn't have spices, right? So if we come over to this cabinet over here and we open this up, we have our spice rack. And so it's a nice slimline spice rack. You lift up the valve right here and this slides right out. And so you can put uh, either spices in there or even store cans of food or whatever you wanna be. But again, you have some nice features when it comes to using your kitchen area. So now that we're in the sink area, I'd like to point out there is a light up here. Now it's not connected to any switches because it's actually a touch light. So if you touch it in the middle, it turns on and it turns off. So that way you don't have to worry about any electrical because you also get the microwave just above it. So you couldn't really run the light. But this way you have an over the sink light. So our sink, we have a nice deep metal sink. Okay, we have a little cleaning area here so you can set dishes and whatnot while you're cleaning and washing, whatever. But again, we also have two little openings, two valves here for our sink. One is gonna be when you flip it on, that's gonna be coming from your general water tank. Now, if you come over here and you look over here on the side, there's a valve right here on the side. That's your drinking water valve. So you flip that down and you get your drinking water. Again, two water pumps, second one has a triple filter. So if you look under the sink, we keep talking about this triple filter. So I'm gonna get under the sink here. We're gonna open this up. And as this opens up and we look, here's our triple filter system. Now we've made some other improvements to how things are done. So now, uh, if you look, we have valves so we can shut off the area or the water coming into our triple filters. Whereas before, we didn't have those valves. So again, some improvements that we're making. And then another thing that we do have under this cabinet is our hot water temperature reader. So now these have a gauge on it so that we can adjust how much hot water is coming from the hot water tank into our system. So that way, we're not setting it too high and scolding ourselves. All right, so again, continuing with the kitchen, as we come in, we have our drawers with our utensil holders. And our drawers are, let me close a little bit harder, are the soft closed drawers. So it catches and will close softly and it won't allow you to slam it shut. Oops. This has some nice, a nice deep drawer. So we have some, some bowls and some cups stored in here. But again, you can store whatever food is gonna be putting into places, however you would like. And then down here, we also have some nice storage. So if you wanted to put, you know, your garbage bags or, or whatever, you know, maybe rolls of paper towels or whatever things you may have, you can store that in that lower area. Okay. So again, to conclude our kitchen area is our refrigerator. So we have our freezer and our refrigerator. So it's a dual zone fridge or freezer and refrigerator. So, but full size. Um, and then as you come down here to the bottom, we have one more cabinet 
And again, in the cabinet, you can actually see the clear hoses for our filler tubes, for our drinking water and our general water, and then the two pumps. And again, the two pumps, one is for your sink and your shower and the toilet, and the secondary pump is gonna be for your drinking water. So in our units, if you look up at our ceilings, we used to have that high gloss look to it. Well, we've changed part of uh, what we're using now. So now we're using more of like an acrylic piece with a matte finish. So it's not that shiny finish that we have. Um, and again, we still have our speakers mounted on the ceiling and as well as our LED strip lighting and as well as our puck lighting to help light things up. We're still using the Malaysian cabinetry, the Malaysian wood with the wood veneer cabinetry and our locking cabinets as well. And so as we come around and we look around at all these different things, a couple of changes. We also have, uh, you know, we're using thin sheets of aluminum within our construction as well. So we're making a lot of improvements. Um, our roof, um, we're using a single sheet of aluminum for our roof. Um, our height that we're still looking in this unit, if I get past the air conditioner, we have a head clearance of six foot three inches within this unit. Now, when you get to the air conditioner, eh, it's a little bit closer, like six footish or so, um, you run into it, but that's unfortunately, that's just one of the things that that's what this unit is and for its heights. Now, as we come around the corner over here, one of the nice improvements that we've done, and I'm gonna show you the door really quick, and then we can show you the rest of the shower, is the changing of our door. I love this door, this articulating door, this uh, uh, accordion door. And so as the water hits, it's not folding out into the living space. The, the whole door will roll back onto itself, so that way all the water stays within the shower space. So you can see as it hits the track, that track is gonna leave the water in the shower. So we have a nice large shower space. Um, it's about oh, maybe what, a two and a half by three foot to maybe even four foot wide or so. Um, we have a nice shower head with, which also is able to slide up and down. We have a rack in here so we can hang some stuff. If we wanna maybe hang a towel for later on when we're letting it dry, um, you know, or put our soap or whatever we would like to do. We can have a little dish rack, little soap rack there. Um, and a really nice shower head on there um, with several different settings. So that way you can get a nice good wash. But again, that's if you are hooked up to a water area, um, otherwise you'll go through that 50 gallons of water pretty darn quickly. Um, and then there's also a vent. I'm gonna turn this, uh, that one on. We have a vent with lights on it too. So that way you kind of add to your lighting feature as you are in the shower. So it's a really nice large shower area. So as we continue into the trailer from the shower, now we come into the bathroom area. And so we have a nice porcelain sink. The toilet is actually porcelain. It's not a plastic camping trailer toilet. Um, there is a vanity drawer uh, that's in there as well as a nice little shelf. Uh, so maybe it's for storing your hand towels or whatever you're gonna be using. I'm gonna actually come in here real quick. I'm gonna open up the little drawer. So you do have the piping in the way, but you know, you can still store things in there. Uh, you know, maybe toothpaste or mouthwash or extra rolls of toilet paper, whatever you wanna do. But we have a nice, cute, like I said, little vanity, little shelving area. Um, this again is your restroom. And we are also utilizing that same accordion door technology on the door. Uh, it's not pulling out into um, the area um, as well as there's a nice little window on there so you can open up your window to vent things out as need be. So speaking of the air conditioner, obviously our unit has an air conditioner. And the thing with our units is it's a Dometic air conditioner, but it's a dual zone. You have air, cooling air, and it's also got like a heat pump. So you can use it as an air conditioner and as a heater. So if you look up here on the gauges, you can see you have the different gauges for blue for cold, red for hot. So that would be able to be in like cool temperatures, not extreme cold temperatures for keeping you warm. For keeping you warm in the extreme cold temperatures, you'd want to refer to the propane powered vent, which is down here by the bed, down by the floor down there. And I'll talk a little bit about it a little bit later and I'll show you the thermostat for it a little bit later and the switch for it. But that's gonna be the main heater unit when you're in your extreme cold temperatures. When you're getting down into the low fives, the zeros, the negatives, stuff like that. This will work good for cold temperatures, but not for your extreme colds. Your extreme colds, you should be referring down to your floor propane heater unit. 
So here in the front bedroom area, essentially, so we're at the front of the trailer, we have a really nice features in here. And so one of the nice features we have is this overhead right here. Now, one of the cool parts about it is there's actually a light on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, kind of light things up a little bit. But you also, you can open things up. So you kind of push this bar, that raises it up. It really helps cool off this entire unit, this entire area as it is. Um, and this also has your privacy screen or your bug screen, um, as it were, so you can have those open as well. But again, some really nice features to it. Nice large windows, nice large window here, nice large window on the other side as well. And then one of the other features that's here, um, we have a drawer. So we got a drawer on each side of the bed that pulls open. And one of the things we have is also our thermostat. So this is the thermostat for the propane heater I was talking about earlier. And the propane heater is actually mounted just beneath my feet right here um, in this bedroom area. Um, there's also a small cabinet on the floor over here as well, underneath the bed. There's not a lot of storage or there's not a ton of storage underneath our beds like you find in most trailers because what's actually stored under our beds is that slide across outdoor kitchen and then other front compartments. So there's not a ton of under bed storage here in this area. So also another feature here in our bedroom is another DVD TV player. Uh, so you can sit in bed, relax, watch some TV, maybe watch a movie. Um, we also have another speaker mounted up here, um, as well as more cabinets. We have more cabinets that also line the area. We have two cabinets uh, where you can hang clothing as well. Uh, so really the front bedroom area is similar to most all of the other units, the HQ-19, the HQ-17, the HQ-15, stuff like that, that we have on our units. It's just now one of the other nice features is if you're having kids, you got the kids up front, you have your pocket door. So the pocket door right now is locked in place. You can release it, slides across. And so we have our pocket door locked in place. So that way now you have some privacy if you wish to change or just have some private time, whatever you need. Um, but that's one of the nice things is we have our pocket door here. So here in the front area, as we have, you know, our entertainment area and we have all the different things we have. One of the other things we also have is our radio. So we have our radio that's going to work on our speakers, the speakers we saw outside and the speakers we saw in the unit when I show you in a little bit here. Um, but we also have our satellite switch. This is the satellite inverter switch. So the main unit is under the bench there, but you want to leave that in the off position and only utilize this one. So there's inverter on, there's inverter off, and then there's this third switch that says power saver. Don't ever use that. That is for technician's use only. You only want to use on and off. Now, the only time you turn the inverter on is when you need to use the microwave or your TV. You come over, you flip it to the on position, it'll turn on, it'll go through the little cycle here. Now our microwave just turned on, that was that beep. Okay, now if you are going to plug in to a 30 amp shoreline, you use your outside plug, you want to charge your batteries. When you plug in, you need to turn your inverter switch to the on position because then your inverter becomes a converter. So usually if you're going to go from 12 volt power, it's going to be DC, it's going to, the inverter is going to invert it to AC power to use the microwave or the TV. But when you plug into the wall, it's going to take AC power, convert it into DC power to charge your battery. Once your battery is charged, you turn off your inverter switch. How you doing, everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And we hope that you enjoyed the last video of a series that we just got finished watching. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask to make sure that you please like and subscribe to our channel so that way you can see all of the videos that are coming up in our series. So make sure that you get out there, you smash that bell up in that corner up there. And again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Camper. So we hope you enjoyed that video. Take care everybody, have a great day.